Hello everyone, I am Ivan Broderick's and it gives me great pleasure to welcome all of you to the Economic Times Digital Roundtable on a hybrid cloud model, the theme being how relevant is going to cloud for businesses and does a hybrid cloud model make sense today? As part of Dell Technologies and Intel Corporation presents and Telstra co-presents the second edition of the Economic Times GCC Summit 2022, co-powered by ServiceNow and Salesforce. Organizations globally have adjusted course in recent months to navigate uncertainties and continue to have innovation and transformation as fundamental priorities. A recent hybrid cloud report of NIIT uncovers how organizations intend to utilize hybrid cloud to their advantage, namely to seek agility, enhanced security, better performance, and increased efficiency gains as part of their own agendas over the coming year. Hence, we hear going to cloud as a war cry in corporate India, no matter where you look. But what does it really mean? Is it a public cloud, multiple clouds, a hybrid version of private and public cloud? And is it a panacea for agility, security, performance, and efficiency? The question may have different answers from different vantage points. In this digital roundtable discussion, we will discuss how relevant is going to cloud for your business and does a hybrid cloud model make sense in today's times. Some of the key discussion points include pros and cons of a hybrid cloud model, key challenges and how to identify them while going to cloud, and top use cases on the adaption of hybrid cloud model. Before I introduce the members of the panel, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our partners for collaborating with us at this summit, presenting partners, Dell Technologies and Intel, co-presenting partner, Telstra, co-powered partners, Salesforce and ServiceNow, knowledge partner, Deloitte India, talent leadership partner, Carrier Technologies India, innovation partner, Pfizer, associate partner, Global Logic, media partners, GEC Media Group, Pace Space Magazine, and Business Transformation Asia, brought to you by ET and Y. Friends, do join the conversation and on Twitter and other social media handles using the hashtag ETGCC Summit. I also urge all of you to kindly network with each other. Visit the various booths, especially our partner booths, where you can chat or video call any of them. By doing so, you also stand to win points for the leaderboard and thereby win exciting prizes. We have a power pack panel with us today. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce and welcome the esteemed members of this panel. Srija S, Director Cloud at Philips India Limited. Ashish Nanjiani, Senior Director Engineering at Rakuten. Padri Narayanan Jagannathan, Vice President IT Applications at Juniper Networks. Ravi Kumar M, Vice President Consulting at CGI. Amit Mitra, Executive Director at Broadridge and Krishna Chaitanya, Senior Director, Global DC and Cloud at AB InBev. This session will be moderated by Sudeep K. Goswami, Director and GM, South India and Startups at Dell Technologies. Sudeep, over to you. Thank you, Ivan, and a warm welcome to everyone. This uh, is an exciting topic for me because I think it impacts almost every organization in India, be it small or large. 
Today, we'll not just discuss the various cloud models, but their economics. Is there a way to best use cloud as you go on the journey? And also paint a picture to you with respect to future technologies and how cloud could be one of the ways that you scale up. I have a panelist, a panel which is pure gold. Uh, I have senior leaders from organizations who are market leaders in their own industries, and uh, I am delighted to get started. So, without further ado, I am going to ask my first question to Ashish and Amit, which is public cloud, private cloud, or hybrid cloud. Who does their vote go to, and why? Amit, maybe you can get started. Absolutely, so the, uh, if you're able uh, to hear me, hopefully. Um, I, I think that's a great question. First of all, um, uh, you know, welcome to everybody. I would like to say that the response to your question is something that most technologies do not like. And the answer is it, it really depends. Um, I would think that uh, when you talk about something like a, by a public cloud, what you're essentially doing is you're basically consuming the IT resources over the internet on a pay-per-use basis. And you're doing it in a public infrastructure, which is shared with a lot of other uh, customers. In such a scenario, you're basically consuming it in a multi-tenant fashion, which essentially means that there are issues that the third party organization, which is hosting your services, will have to take care of. Where would you use a public cloud scenario? Let's say you want to completely offload your uh, undifferentiated heavy lifting, all the racking and stacking that you would. Uh, did we lose your video or audio, Amit? Uh, uh, I think. Uh, Amit, I think we lost your audio. Can you hear us? Uh, no, we Maybe can't. Some problem. Maybe Amit, you could fix that. I will go to Ashish in the meanwhile for the same question. Ashish, your views, public cloud, private cloud or hybrid cloud, where does your vote go to? Sure, sure. First of all, I would like to welcome everyone. It's a happy place to be here and discuss what the future looks like. Uh, I think what Amit was alluding, I think my answer is also it depends. And I think we should start with why. Right. Why you want public cloud or private cloud or hybrid cloud is all depend on the question why. Because each one of us come from a different business segment and it all depends on what's your business looking to get benefit out of any strategy. Right. There is no perfect answer that everybody has to go to public. Now, companies like Netflix who has to deliver content in all parts of the world with low latency, I think public cloud makes perfect sense for them. But maybe the same situation doesn't apply for fintech where data privacy, data governance, data security is more important than any other thing. So maybe mm -hmm. private is much better for them. And there may be e-commerce companies who might be thinking, hey, let's have a front end on our you know, uh, public cloud, but our back end should be in our own cloud. So hybrid might be a better way. So I think my vote is definitely towards the future looks to be multi-hybrid cloud. But mm -hmm. I would say before jumping into that, Every business leader should think, why should I be doing that? And if you get that answer, why from your business leaders, then act accordingly instead of listening to anybody else, listen to your business and then make the best decision. Thank you. Amit, uh, are you able to? Yeah. Yes, uh, if you're able to hear me. So absolutely, I completely agree with Arshish. I think this is, uh, a, this is a primary goal that every leader should be uh, approaching the whole question with, which is asking the why. Uh, like I was mentioning, if, if your need is to completely remove your undifferentiated workloads um, you know, and give it to somebody else who's a specialist and you do not have significant security uh, constraints which are not being able to be provided by the public uh, cloud provider, then absolutely you should be able to go to the public cloud uh, provider because they provide you the agility and scalability. Uh, you want to bring up a completely new business model overnight, you should be able to flip that quickly. That has been that can be provided by a, a cloud provider. You want scale, you have variable demand, uh, which you need to be able to, uh, sub, if, your, if your submission process takes three months and your racking and stacking takes uh, another three months, 
then it doesn't work uh, in today's world, right? So you have to be able to go to a provider who is able to give you that level of scale and agility. So in those cases, you should absolutely consider uh, public cloud. Now, there is another part of it, which I'm sure we'll be discussing about, which are the cost economics around that. Um, but at the end of the day, if you really think about it, when you have stringent security constraints or regulatory constraints, you may want to consider private uh, cloud as well. But here is the other part um, for organizations like us, and I'll tell you my answer to the same question. Uh, when I have to think about what would I do, we are an enterprise who have been around for quite some time. Um, we have established processes, established platforms. Um, so we don't, we don't have the ability to say, hey, we have this huge data center with thousands of servers running on that, and we flip the switch and it goes into a public cloud. That's just not possible for us. So we will absolutely have to take a hybrid uh, approach. We will absolutely also have to take a multi-cloud approach simply because as we acquire new organizations, we are acquiring organizations, some are using Azure, some are using right. AWS. So we end up acquiring these different cloud providers. So we will have to support a uh, hybrid in this, uh, in this case. So like I said, uh, you know, it really depends upon your scenario. <clears throat> Thank you. And I think, well elaborated by both of you that it depends and you have also highlighted scenarios where something makes sense over the other. So I'll then take on the question of cloud uh, head on. I saw an interesting article last year summer that came out of Anderson Horowitz which says that when organizations move towards cloud and they had a data point which said 50 of the top public software companies currently utilizing cloud infrastructure have lost an estimated hundred billion dollars of market valuation due to cloud's impact on margins. So if cloud is the way that's going to work for most of us because of what we want to achieve, I want to ask this second question to Mr. Ravi and Krishna, which is, do you think cloud can have a significant impact on an organization's profitability or valuation, either eroded or impacted? And do you see the evidence of this around you to, to make this point up? Uh, Mr. Ravi Kumar, Mr. Krishna, uh, I would seek your views. Yeah, thanks, uh, Sudeep. Uh, definitely, it's a very important point, right? Uh, it has an impact on the profitability of the company. So it depends on the use case. Example, in our own organization, we segment the application. When we inventorize, we segmented the application into the different categories. Mm -hmm. Gold, platinum, and business critical, non-business critical. Each of the application, we did the TCO for what is the current spend if I host it in my virtual data center that is a private cloud versus moving into the any of the public cloud, right? We are, we are in right now in a multi-cloud environment, two large uh, CSPs. And we saw there is a uh, lot of people urge, have an urge to okay, move the workloads into the cloud, a lot of pressure, okay, we need to move to the cloud. But in reality, not all use cases of the application will yield because some application has a significant impact on our spend, OPEX spend in the year one, year two, and some, uh, there is no business case at all. What we decided was based on the segmentation of an application and the business need, we made a conscious decision not to move all the applications to the uh, public cloud, and we retained it in our private cloud environment. And some of the newer age applications, which has a more agility, and also our workforce is distributed because we operate out of 70 countries in multiple locations and there we require a lot of content caching and some of the application we took a conscious decision to go into the hybrid cloud and uh, that was a decision made for to the cloud but the caveat was as soon as we move the cloud because a lots of hidden costs we call it as a gas fee not just only vm we have to pay we have to pay the cost for ingress data movement, data movement from cloud to the your, our data centers. Uh, there are a lot of hidden costs because mm -hmm. none of the cloud service provided don't explicitly call it out. And because we burnt out when we uh, went live in application, then we figured out okay, a lot of cost associated, right? Okay, there is a lot of different cost element just excluding the application. Then we figure out what we need to do. We need to have a, a tight control on mm -hmm. the cost governance because we uh, we thought, okay, we estimated some X billion dollars for an application. After immediately six months, I consumed the entire my budget to the application and I just figured out, okay, what, what's happening? Because I already overshot the budget because we'll not know because all the data is based on the usage. We'll not even know what will happen to our application usage because the 
very hard to predict some of the pattern and it depends on the, your um, uh, promotion of the application if it is in public based p to c or p to b kind of an application we ran into a problem then in last one plus year i think you might have seen in the industry explicitly talk about cloud cost governance a lot of frameworks uh, mm -hmm. i think every every one has been uh, using this and the iterative basis to control the cost we implemented that cost too, so that we have a budget allocated to them uh, and it is a, it's a herculean task especially to get uh, procurement team says uh, always procurement team says okay, why don't you go for the cheapest option of the cloud environment whereas mm -hmm. your say architecture team says now we stick to the one cloud moving the workloads to the different cloud as an application dependencies so some of these challenges we ran into and uh, as we move along we are learning and also implementing best practices definitely there is an impact on our profitability margin as you alluded uh, there is an article which you mentioned just now uh, companies like public software companies has an impact of contribution impact of 20 to 20 to 30 percent which is a huge impact uh, on the uh, on the bottom line and any organization if it 20 to 30 percent pure economics says that okay why should we have the entire workflow if and there is impact of 20 to 30 percent Based on that, we made a decision to be that we'll go to their hybrid cloud. We have to go. There is no option. Certain application does not have a break-even point, and certain application we know that there is a based on the consumption model. And we also use uh, the CSPs, right? When two years back, the cost pricing model is different. Now, because of the Google, Microsoft, and AWS, we have very competitive pricing among them, so that you leverage them pricing models and decided to stay with some of the application. We are not 100% on the entire cloud environment. But it's a selective approach based on the needs of the business needs. That's how we are approaching on it. And profitability, as we see current spend also, even though we already applications have migrated to the cloud, we're constantly watching. Uh, sometimes we overshoot, frankly. Uh, we never under budget in the cloud. Sometimes we overshoot. We're trying to bring in some controls using, using cloud FinOps uh, governance frameworks to control the cost so that we don't overspend on the uh, cloud expense especially. That's that's good. Thank you for bringing out the nuances uh, in approaching cloud and how to manage it. We heard from Ravi, a large IT organization. I wanted to ask the same question to a very different segment, uh, Mr. Krishna from AB InBev. Krishna, your views. Yeah, thanks, Sadeep. Uh, thanks, everyone. So I think as Ravi pointed, right, so the cloud has a public cloud has both pros and cons. So if you don't use a proper right sizing today, right, so we can... Uh, use more and more services. The second challenge what we have seen is as we use increasing in the cloud, we also see a challenge of not optimizing it. People just deny like, hey, I have a server keep running forever, even on the weekends, weekdays. So the cost keep on going on increasing. So the cost is one of the key aspects for majority of what we have seen, right? It keeps bubbling up day to day. That is one aspect. The second aspect, what I also see in public clouds uh, basically is if you don't have proper governance, right, and the proper checks. So there will be a lot of, uh, we would call like a shadow IT. People just go and create number of users, access, mm -hmm. and then it will bubble up to your overall, uh, again, this is the second aspect for cost, right? So these two are very, very phenomenal, significant as we move on more and more of our workloads, applications to bring the resiliency and the capabilities, what we are looking at current industry to move to cloud, but also bring negative aspects, right? So if you don't manage it, maintain it properly, so this will have major impact on the profitability. Thank you. So what are we hearing from the panel as of now that multiple cloud is a reality and managing multiple clouds and governance around it is key for you to go long term and be uh, conscious about the costs that you make. So I have a question that's coming up in my mind now that in reality, many of us will be on different, different clouds in general, uh, on-prem, off-prem or a mix of that. How easy or difficult it is for organizations to switch gears. And this is a question I'd want to ask uh, uh, Mr. Ravi again uh, on his views and also invite uh, Ms. Shrija from Philips on this. I want to ask how easy or difficult do you think in your view it is to switch gears, to move from, let's say, a public model to a private model or a private model to a public model while you are still scaling or have a substantial presence on one model or the other. What has been your experience? So, I think interesting questions. The uh, we have seen, right, I think most of the customers, our own customers and also some of our colleagues, 
typically we plan the cloud journey migrating from on prem to the cloud it takes average around 4 to 6 months depending on the type of the application once we move to the cloud most of the development of the applications we are pushing towards microservice based architecture depends on the native right if it is your application is microservice based architecture is cloud ready then moving there and build the application in such a way that in the cloud environments you have that agility and also uh, uh, it it grows up scalability as well but if you same thing assuming that if you move that and if you want to reverse it back i feel it is again it's a big migration plan it is not going to be easy the reason is you are letting go of all your data center and your expertise letting go of the team right if it is a large service provider i think it's a big game but let us say if any customer has a core it function and the whole purpose of moving off to the cloud was a lot of advantage which some of our colleagues said but if you want to bring back its same level amount of exercise and pain we have to go through we have not done so far but uh, uh, we have not done any repatriating any application or environment from public cloud to the on prem you have not done it but if i see some architecture point of view it is a huge task it is not going to be an easy switch on the button you flip it on it is not but what we are designing when the application is we don't want to lock into any cloud service provider single cloud cloud service provider because the cost of aws or azure it depends on the type of agreement which we have right the gcp we want to have a flexibility between the cloud providers so that the workloads can be moved from one cloud provider to the other cloud provider so to get an agility of our cost benefit what we have done is we have designing the application what we are asking our our architecture groups is to design in such a way that we don't want to get in a lock in at the same time we should be able to move the workload within the cloud provider so that we get a cost benefit only purely on the cost benefit we have taken it uh, we are going that approach but not repatriating the from there to on prem because uh, uh, we did a uh, whiteboarding session with our, our core team we found that it is going to be a nightmare right? we asked that then again it is going to be a separate team switching back a lot of nuances which we did not we are not worked on of it but i feel uh, it is going to be a humongous task as good as a migration repatriate mm. also a big challenge for from my experience and so far we also interact with the, some of our other countries where um i have not come across any any major application where repatriating completely so this but people are uh, everybody's worry is okay my spend is more how do you bring back there a uh, discussion with cios and the providers is hey, what is the way now because of this problem there is new consultancy services is emerged right cost control optimize the cloud optimization of cloud that's a yeah. services which sold to the lot of gcc and organization or a lot of organization I mean, okay, your spend is so much. Instead of going back, I'll reduce by ten percent, fifteen percent, if you follow this framework. Mm-hmm. And people are exploring that option before going to the making a big decision from repatriating. We, I've not come across personally, but we are discussing on that. But definitely on the multi-cloud, we are very clear. We don't want to stick on to the one or cloud provider. We want an agility and uh, between moving the workloads between the cloud providers. So I'll. add to that and ask this question to shrija again that uh, i've seen and heard of public domain cases like a z scaler or a dropbox and some more companies in india who have repatriated so shrija the same question to you what do you think is is it easy or difficult to move from one model to other because i have many examples here where people have done that and uh, you heard ravi's views i'd love to hear from you yeah Uh, so ma- hello everyone yeah thanks to be this team yeah uh, discussing this most relevant topic and the right question also actually why you know we should also see why did this question come up now because after mm-hmm. you know uh, about maybe last 12 13 years is when the cloud started and start you know that is when people have realized that yes we have actually started on the cloud and but we are realizing now that not everything is hungry dory correct so we may have to go back in times in certain areas but can we can we not correct but when we went to cloud one was cost second was how we should be able to keep up with the technology can we leverage the latest technologies what cloud providers are offering are we able to put governance around it exactly like ravi and amit was mentioning also can we put a governance around it 
So I think where we did all our effort in the last five to six years, including me when we were doing large scale migrations, is purely on the migration on the data exit, data center exit, rather. Right. Okay. We right. really, as large corporations, did not focus on building new applications on the services that actually Microsoft or AWS or you know, Google offered, okay? That is why if you see, most growth happened on AWS and Azure, but not on the GCP, because GCP's offer was always the next gen services rather than hosting, okay? Mm -hmm. So we were not mature enough, we just blindly migrated, okay? And now we felt, yes, it is costly, yes. We, mm -hmm. all of us have done that because that was the need of the R. But now if you see, you know, yes, Dropbox, Ola, everybody wanted to go back to the private cloud that is there. Mm -hmm. Okay. But having said that, how to actually be on cloud because cloud is a reality. And given the silicon shortage that we face every two years, if you see every time we face a silicon shortage. Okay. It's a recurring game. Hmm. And Apple's and Samsung's of the world will actually take the chip and it does not come to Intel or Dell or anybody, Cisco or, or anybody for that matter. Correct? Because what mm -hmm. you sell are edge devices. Because right. the companies want to reach the mass and not the corporates. Correct? That's where the money lies. Yeah. Correct? You can see the growth of any of the technologies which actually are growing who are actually touching the masses. Okay, mm -hmm. So we will have the silicon shortage. So we have to stick to the hybrid cloud because that is the only way we can actually get our growth done. Otherwise, if I ask for a, a hardware, it takes exactly like Amit said, three months to do negotiation, another three months to do the, get the hardware and then insulation, where will we go? Correct. So hybrid cloud is a must. And what we should, I think, focus now is to change whatever we have migrated into mm -hmm. the next gen platforms so that the cost is controlled. If I move a VM as such on an IaaS model onto cloud, I pretty much pay actually almost double the cost if I had it in my on-prem. Very Correct? interesting, yeah. Correct. So then True. what to do? I need to actually, if I uh, move a SQL server from IaaS to IaaS, I would rather go to a PaaS service. Okay, mm -hmm. I think it is a time that we need to actually migrate whatever we've migrated already to the next gen, but then again comes with the risk. But we are actually, if I was in IaaS, like Ravi was mentioning, for me, I don't have interlock. I can move from AWS to Azure anytime I want. Mm -hmm. Okay, with that particular caveat on ingress, egress, and all that, right? But if I, I'm interlocking on SaaS, or I mean, PaaS, I am actually getting slightly locked onto the services. Because I will use data lake services, I will use data break services and stuff like that. And then I'm getting a little more locked in. But mm -hmm. is locked in me really not, correct? When I go for SAP or Oracle Financials or Salesforce as a product, anyway, I'm locked in. Right. Correct. So yeah. a kind of lock-in becomes a way of life. That is where I think Web3 plays a lot of importance. So my thing is, Whenever we are starting a new application, please start on Web3 because you will have 5G there. You have edge technologies coming in. You will, will have, uh, you know, blockchain development because the new age developers, you believe me or not, another five years, all the old developers won't be there. You will only have blockchain yeah. developers. The skill will be different. Millennial, uh, you know, workforce is going to actually take over the entire spectrum and the technologies will change. Skills will be very, very different that is required. Srija, hold your thought on that one. I'm going to come back to you about those technologies. But, you know, hearing you again peel some nuances of what it would be, I'm tempted to ask the same question to Ashish also. He comes from an industry which is always at the cutting edge of technology. So, Ashish, the same question to you. Uh, do you think it's easy to flip or difficult to flip from one model to the other? I think uh, it depends on what the road you build, right? So many years back, there was, we thought there's one way street to go to public cloud and we'll all be happy there because it's cheap, it's economical, et cetera, right? 
and then now we are realizing that hey is there a way to turn back so i think turning back is possible but as ravi said it's going to be expensive but for the people who are still getting started there is an opportunity right some of us have learned from the experience we have gone through burned our cash realize we have a problem the going back road is very expensive but i think it all comes back to planning and shija indicated that on the application architecture right we are talking about ias whether it's private or public and uh, just connecting back to the cost thing we were talking about right many years back it was like one black shop where everybody used to just say i want servers i want databases i want what not right they were not worried about budget they were not even able to see the consumption public cloud mm-hmm. change everything and you know made the consumption on your face and say this is much you are using so whether you are public or private the thing is you should have that visibility of how much you are consuming in either place right your billing becomes very important well said yeah right yeah. now coming back to your question is it can we come back yes so the important thing is how do we plan ahead right what kind of applications you are going to use in a public cloud and are they going to lock you in as shija was saying or they are like kubernetes type application that even if you are using that and you decide to come back either from one cloud to another cloud or private cloud you can still move back but if you end up using proprietary aws or azure or gcp related services then it makes life difficult for you and in rack rack uh, and just to come back home yeah. our cloud is totally built on open source right we are not we have decided day one when you build our cloud we will not use as much as possible any vendor solutions we will use open source and build on top of it which now gives us flexibility that tomorrow if we decide to move if the equivalent open source is available in some other p- cloud we can move our workload so i think that planning is very important now we cannot avoid lock in as shija said if you are using oracle yeah yeah i don't know when you can come back out of oracle it's like a big lock in but that planning is very important on your application workload not so on the infrastructure but what is your application workload yeah like? i first of all i think what i hear from you is uh, very interesting and exciting because one of the few voices which says we building our cloud on open source now i am going to tackle the question of planning because what i'm hearing is it is difficult and hence let me introduce my last panelist and i am going to ask the toughest question to him mr badrin narayan from juniper so you heard everybody on this call as how it's building up and i think what's coming up is that we should have a good solid uh, plan to work through on this so i am asking you uh, is there a blueprint that one could follow from the experience of others as to how to plan this journey into cloud maybe start from public cloud move towards something does hybrid come at a particular stage where you do multi cloud what is your experience uh, sure. mr badrinaran thanks sudeep and uh, thank you for having me on this panel today um welcome to all of you who are joined in today as well uh, i think um, the last uh, 25 30 minutes we have had some really interesting thoughts right from different people why why go to cloud why private or public cloud why uh, sort of a hybrid cloud then what does it means to go to uh, one of these why do you choose one of choose one of these how economic is it if you choose what is the um i mean sort of uh, the path you have to lay if you want to actually get value out of this migration and uh, some of the recent thoughts from ravi or um, ashish or um, shrija on uh, if if you really want to get value out of it how do you plan so that you have an option to if you want to change your thought at some point in time what is it that you have to think through early enough so that when you lay down that path you have choices when you go forward right i mean going to cloud is no different than what what we do on anything in life i guess right if you if you take your time to think through a friend on what you want to be, get the benefit out of this migration right then you will know what choices you want to make i mean there is nothing right or wrong in saying i want to for example i say let's say aws right i mean uh, we i'm i bring in a lot of from an application focus so i'll talk for an application focus then on the infrastructure but i'll try to connect both saas and pass and ias here in a way right take aws for example all these cloud providers want you to stick to them they want to continue to they will keep providing you nuances and new features that are, that accelerate what you do so you can actually as a application developer you are tempted to take more and try new things right so how we, how you as an architect or a 
a planner in your organization define what what you can do what you cannot do in a club right so so i think i think if you are a large organization see if you are a startup it's very very clear go to the cloud is a, a no brainer i think it accelerates you to get your product out to the marketplace it is definitely a lot more easily scalable uh you are not really looking at short term cost economics at that point in time you want your more uh, speed to market is more important to you more important for you so your priorities are very very different so your choices are very very clear in those cases but if you are a company which is fairly stable if your uh, uh, workloads are fairly predictable again if your workloads are very unpredictable if your applications are such where your workloads are unpredictable cloud gives you a lot of advantages in terms of flexibility you can turn on uh, you can scale very very fast you can bring down workloads to a level so those choices in an internal data center are very very difficult right you have to invest and you will have a lot of idle time you have to then manage those idle workloads what do you want to do with so so planning internally becomes more difficult in those cases is not easier in the cloud but if you, let's say most of our companies uh, which are large companies today are fairly stable companies running on predictable workloads but we all like to be on the cloud right and uh, in that scenario uh, and and if you look at all the all the software major software vendors are moving away from providing you an app a license to implement in your data center anymore i think most of them they would prefer you to be on their cloud or or they implement on a public cloud right that's how the world is moving so how do we adapt to such a scenario is predominantly two things i i feel as a mm-hmm. uh, organization i look at one is what what is the ground jewel for you as a company what is what is your core competency what is the security <laughs> that you need to ensure that you want to protect which which makes significant uh, uh, competitive differentiation between from your competitor how do you mm-hmm. protect that is something the business has to be very clear on so that we know those have to be protected and more often than not they will be private cloud i don't think you really are uh, worry too much about cost there or how do you run it you want to make sure competitive differentiation is more important for me as a company and i focus those and i try to build what is necessary and build the expertise inside the company to manage that uh, where where you really want to go leading it like for example i think uh, shri jata touched upon it let's say you want to you want to get the next generation analytics platform quickly up and running for your organization right i mean to build that in house is not going to be easy for you for multiple reasons one is of course I mean, you can buy the product there are a lot of products in the market so you can buy the product but to get expertise on top of that and get value is not easy in a market where we are living so so it's probably a little easier if you work with a pass provider or a saas provider who can help you near term to try and scale your organizational needs in terms of getting insights quickly but but what what it all means then is you should have tremendous integration capabilities in an organization you are going to leverage different pro- products across different players mm. and, uh, but the data is common you want the tra- the data you are capturing through your transactions or through any other means into your organization is the same data that you want to leverage using multiple platforms and and get insights out of it it could be ai ml based insights it could be analytics that provide you better decision making capabilities in the in the organization it could be things like self healing in many cases if you can understand what the problem your product is creating with consumer and how do i predict that problem or i anticipate it and fix it before mm-hmm. it can actually create trouble in the client side those are type of things that you can do if you can actually mine your data effectively and collect all the data appropriately so the volume of data you're going to get a significant so cloud helps you in those areas because scaling becomes a lot easier it's very difficult to do some of that in a data center of your own for most companies again uh, there is always a top 1% of the companies which can build their own cloud because they have both capacity and investment uh, but for most companies it's not easy So, so mr badri uh, i think I, i i like what you said and i i picked up that word core competence you gave in an insight about what is your differentiation and where should it reside i am going to take the same question and ask it to srija again i was hearing from her how to plan in the previous questions on the srija what, what would be your take uh, on this question is, is there a blueprint to approaching uh, your loads on cloud and how to go about it yeah so you know i uh, that right now you know all said and done 
we are still on a hybrid cloud. Most of us are on hybrid cloud, right? Uh, the COVID actually made us do so. Some of our uh, uh, end user systems are running today on virtual desktops, correct? So starting with that, even people who did not have any bit of cloud, you know, had to go into a hybrid cloud, if you say, you know, mm. because of the demand increase for user. You know, the COVID actually uh, taught us that IT is one service which had the greatest demand of workforce requirement. And, you know, the challenge of logistics forced all of us to go for a VDA solution. I think most of us will know about it. So that was one. So we are on hybrid cloud, no matter what, I think most of us may be on hybrid cloud as a platform. So now for me, the blueprint from when we have to actually look at this, I think the existing platform as Badri and Ravi and uh, Ashish alluded to, you know, depending on the predictability of, predictability of the workload, we should choose whether it is on-prem or actually public cloud. That is one thing that we can do. Mm -hmm. Second thing is, if we have to develop a new application, okay, I will definitely start with, I will not go for on-prem. I will definitely go a public and see whether I have products in the market that can be integrated. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is where I would actually go with Badri's point of very strong integration correct when you have a decentralized data that is coming in when we have web3 and iot devices that are coming in which i can approve whether you can take the data or not you know mm. you know maybe 3 years from now all of us will be wearing a specs which has a camera and what i do may i can sell what i want to do so if i go to a shop i can sell the data saying that this is what i do today mm. youtube is able to sell it tomorrow i can sell it correct as an ad so the world is going to change that is where integration capability and mm. even the you know maybe there is this is a, a statistics as of 2021 where the data on public internet actually 80 percent of it is video Okay. Yes. All of us yeah. actually use radio. Okay. Of which only 7% is stored. Okay. Mm. So there is so much more requiring storage. So I may go take a picture of a flower when I walk out in the thing. And tomorrow, imagine I'm actually able to make a Bangalore directory of flowers and, you know, sell it. Today, it is just lying on my Samsung mm. mobile, correct? Or Android mobile iOS mobile. So tomorrow things could actually change and I could actually make some money out of doing that. Yeah. And therefore you see the change in things. So I may not work anymore. I may have a contractual. So the employment is going to change. Millionaires will not work like you and me who will actually be employed by a company. They will work on a crowdsourcing model. Yeah. Okay. So that is going to change. So even uh, companies will start working based on trust and mm -hmm. you know uh, co-location may change because you put more co-location you may lose talent you may have to source the talent across the globe and you know that is where your authenticity comes in you can be on your own you know i have two children who are millennials so i think most of you will have so the way they talk to us is very straightforward they mm -hmm. don't you know they don't have that uh, cap on them where they say okay i have to say this way because i am doing this way if you ask them to go to a bank to open an account they will not do it they'll say okay why can't i do it on my mobile correct okay. so exactly that way the world is going to change the product will change that is why patri's point of integration has to come People today are actually uh, millennials are investing in Bitcoin. Yeah. Whereas old people may not be investing, still we may be wary of investing. Correct? So investment is going to change. And our government has actually approved cryptocurrency now. Correct? Not approved, but they're taxing. Yeah, yeah. yeah? So what yeah. does that mean? 
they are giving a first step towards legalizing it so tomorrow right. our payments could happen using cryptocurrency so i yeah i i i'm getting drift from two people who are into products or big oems and this is something that and i i like the point that you made about uh, innovates web 3.0 distributed uh, computing infrastructure so i wanted to go and ask one last question to amit and krishna and in line with what shrija has been outlining you know new technologies for the future like web 3.0 industrial iot looking at uh, blockchains here on a different context in the future context 5 years from now when many of these things become a reality and we wear those glasses rabi doesn't have one so rabi might have to borrow a new glass but when we are wearing all those things uh, what's the what's the future of cloud in those uh, years amit and krishna what do you guys think sure um so i i'll go first if you're okay uh, krishna yeah. so i would um i would divide this into two parts right the first is the technology itself and how it's going to evolve and uh, second is the process of investment of looking into the future looking into the crystal ball and making decisions about how do you invest right so the technology itself i i think in specifically about cloud it has gone through multiple generations now the, what we are seeing today is being called uh, distributed cloud and we are going almost into a ubiquitous cloud um, kind of a zone where uh, it is being available at the edge uh, for mobiles to connect it's available at your data center which connects back to the public cloud infrastructure it's available for you know anybody to use anywhere so it's kind of becoming ubiquitous that's where the technology is going and similarly the other technologies as well you mentioned about digital ledger distributed ledger we have invested in um you know pocs to find out how this technology is going to help us in the future and we have actually come up with a solution which our customers are uh, using at this point of time it's called dlt repo um it's part of the financial services business i'll not go into that uh, in detail but i want to also talk about the process um you know and this is where i think most of us really need uh, i being a technologist for a long time uh, have wanted some kind of guidance about how do you find out which technology should i be adopting immediately which technology should i be waiting for a little bit which technology should i uh, allow to mature in order for me to find out whether it meets my uh, criterion or not so i think that is a very important aspect of what technology leaders and and, and executives need to really think about because uh, i have really followed this hype cycle right this is the mm. gartner hype cycle uh, where where initially when a technology is introduced a new technology is introduced it comes with a lot of fanfare uh, it is supposed to solve world hunger uh, everybody is doing pocs everybody is investing um and it basically you everybody is uh, you know in the fear of missing out wants to just be there before the competitor is there right so that's that's kind of the initial excitement and huge amount of inflated expectations about the technology we have gone through this in pretty much all of them including internet which has changed the way we we work today even internet went through those initial expectations inflated expectations which got completely busted in the dot com right so mm -hmm. it got busted but then it it matured over a period of time and now if you see you can't think of a world without internet right so whether it is ai whether it is blockchain whether it is uh, you know big data analytics all of that have gone through that cloud is also going through that uh, you know successive generations of technology will get better and it will get more and more closer to the use case that you would like but having said that in terms of your process if you are a technology executive you are you are a leader who needs to make decisions you will have to have a lean startup mindset and by that what i mean is you you have to be open to experimentation but you have to be very very grounded on what is your criteria what what is what is it going to solve for you it's not a technology is not a solution that is waiting for a problem uh you know you should first have a problem and then apply this this technology to solve that problem and so mm -hmm. as a, as a technology leader you need to have be very clear so today if you think about it agile transformation everybody is doing it but is everybody successful maybe not i have heard cases where a lot of agile transformation has happened yet the results are not to be seen the reason for that is started with wrong expectations started with the wrong drivers if the driver for agile adoption is that um you know as a as a technology leader i will get lot more visibility in what everybody is doing 
and I will yeah. make my team run on a daily basis. That is a wrong driver. That's wrong. Right. right. So same with all the technologies that we that we adopt, and same with cloud. So really un- understand the hype cycle. Understand what is the level of maturity of the technology. Understand your particular uh, use case in that context. Drive your uh, your your use case around. Uh, you know what, what what could be your final outcome. Define your success criteria. Then I think you're ready to invest. So I I wanted to. Uh, talk about the technologies, of course, but more also the process, because this is where I have struggled in the past because I had to make this, th- these decisions and I've struggled. And I feel that it is not, I mean, every technology goes through this. And so having this mm-hmm. mindset is going to be very, very, uh, very, very key. Wonderful. I think technology and the process as well of selecting those. Uh, thank you. Krishna, your views? Yeah, thanks. Uh, I think as Amit mentioned, right, uh, so technology selection and the mindset is one of the crucial, especially when we are talking like FMCGs like us, right, where we are trying to digitize our technologies, right, especially our breweries and uh, the logistics supplies. We see a significant uh, uh, kind of a transformation, especially during the COVID times, where we want to transform ourselves. So connecting our breweries to uh, the 5Gs and also connecting uh, the brewery to our IT co- co- backbone, which is ma- basically a distributed computing, right? Where we want to bring the capabilities of our core IT into not only just your IT segment, we also want to bring into our distribution, logistics, and also to the, the modernization of our breweries, which plays a, c- a critical role. Again, uh, with the caveat, right? It's not so straightforward, a click a button kind of a thing, right? A, a detailed uh, process, detailed, there was a lot of complexities. It's not uh, uh, easy to go, but uh, at least with the mindset of of changing it, which will help us to at least to take a step forward. I know it's not going to uh, run smoothly on the day one, but at least you want, we want to try and see whether it is able to do it. And we were very successful in doing that, right? Mm-hmm. And the second example I also want to give, uh, basically with uh, the, the I, uh, industrial IOTs, uh, which we transformed uh, completely automating our the beer manufacturing for us, right? So which, which, which brought a significant improvement, which are also connecting all the applications which are running in cloud today, right? And the third, uh, the significant, which I want to bring during the COVID time, we had a very challenging time because our entire ordering process, we started with a manual uh, B2B kind of a business. We go to the bars and get the orders and so on, right? So we built applications, which will be like entire B2B, fully automated, right? So we couldn't able to achieve that without the cloud because we're bringing them on-prem, which we heard so far, right? Getting an application, servers, take for ages, right? So you want to build f- quicker and faster. We made around 30% of our company revenue coming from this B2B platform today. Not only us, right? With that, the, the reusability, a lot of other customers started coming and asking, can you use your platforms? Not only just sell your products, why can't we sell our products on your platform? They see the potential kind of a, opportunities which can be leveraged with this digitization and this transformation, right? So always, yes, technology is a key. So if you use it right, it might be more beneficial. Again, it's all, as Abit mentioned, the mindset, right? So we need to be very keen on our mindset, try to take some of the things as a new technologies always emerge. So keep cautious and keep moving on that. Yeah. Thank you, Krishna, for the examples that you spoke about. Uh, it, I find such a coherent panel here because I think uh, industry leading, market leading people understand how it's going through. So I would, uh, and starting with Mr. Badri, uh, I, this is a question that I asked to everybody in the panel, and I would want everybody to respond in one quick minute. I think we have just five minutes left. One tip or an advice you would give to people who are listening in and watching this today from your side, from the experience that you have, if you were to give them one tip or one advice on cloud and where they are, what would that be? Mr. Badri, I'll start with you and then go around the table. Sure. Thanks. Uh, I, I think start with the what and why you need. Don't get uh, too focused on cloud technology and stuff like that. Try to understand what is what is it needed for your company. And why are you doing that? If you understand those, the how part of it can be figured, you can easily figure out the how in terms of whether it's to be done in-house, to be done in a cloud, what options you have, you can explore that and figure it out. But be clear, otherwise, as uh, I think Amit was trying to summarize that, you may do a lot of technology implementation, and you'll, you'll go nowhere. I think it's very important you get clear on what you want to achieve out of all this and 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 draw that roadmap and, and change agenda inside the organization. So that it's much easier for you to actually execute Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Badri. Uh, Ravi, your views, please. Yep. So my, my view will be link the cloud strategy with the business strategy, right? Tight integration between, between cloud and city. If it does not make a, a cloud has not been enabler for either revenue generation 
right? Or the cost optimization, the top bottom top line or bottom line, it has to be integrated. If you see that and from that angle, you make a decision based on that. That will be my simple one. Link to your cloud strategy, link back to the business and tie it back. If it is an enabler for your top line revenue and if it is an enabler for your bottom line contribution, healthy margins, I think you, that's what language which we need to talk and you have many levers to execute it. Wonderful insight. Thank you. Ashish, I'll come to you. Yeah, I think uh, Ravi covered very well, but I have three things. One is start with why. Uh, be close to the business, as Ravi was saying. That's pretty important. And then plan, 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 plan well, right? If you plan well, I think you will have less problems in the future. Thanks. On the plan point, I'll go to Krishna. He's talking about planning then. So Krishna, your views? Yeah, so my views, uh, basically, as uh, um, uh, Ashish mentioned, right? Plan is a critical place for the cloud, right? So you put, if you plan well and have a proper governance, always says the governance is a key for you to make it success. Whether it's a, what kind of cloud, whether it's a public, private, whatever the cloud, right? If you plan well and keep the governance in place, I think you'll, you'll succeed. Thank you. Amit, can I come to you now? Sure. Um, a lot of good points already covered. So what I'll go with is, um, if you have if you have to make a choice about cloud, don't go to go to that environment just for the cost. Go for the abilities that it gives you, new capabilities that it gives you. Go for the agility that it gives you. But don't. It's a completely new mindset. It's a different mindset from your existing data center. So try not to get swayed by the. Uh, the vendor advertisements on how it reduces your cost, it actually does more about, it changes the cost dynamics. It does not re exactly reduce it. It changes the way, uh, you know, you, you kind of go at cost. The other part that I also wanted to kind of just uh, add was, I know that I was given only one, I'll take one more, uh, is be careful about multi-cloud. Um, we, uh, we have been there and done that. Um, you know, it definitely gives you flexibility, but there's a tax that you pay for that flexibility. And the tax could be on cost, it could be on performance. Uh, so be careful on that. Thank you. And lastly, but always very important to hear, Srija, your views? Yeah. So because like, as Anand was saying, most of the points are covered, but I will give you a different view mm -hmm. uh, from this. Uh, one of the uh, client that I was working for, okay, was completely working on one of our major public cloud providers. So the entire work that we did focused on productizing their solution that we were building. So mm -hmm. it completely changes the focus on what we want to achieve. So they have a right release pattern. They know how to keep the skill requirement. You know, again, uh, you, you may ask me, why am I coming to the skill again and again? Uh, so you know how to have a core team. You know how to have a, a team of level one, level two, level three support team that needs to be built. Okay, because uh, earlier we had this view of uh, process, people process technology. Now we definitely add, need to add one more P to it, that is partner. Okay, because... Yeah. Okay, with a lot of cloud uh, knowledge or cloud outsourcing that we have done, and also with a lot of GSIs that we work with, we cannot work on this environment without partners. Okay. So they are e equally important. So what happens is that we have outsourced the services, we have outsourced our data centers. Mm -hmm. So now what is our core competency? This is again coming back to the point of what we were mentioning core competency is our IP. So whatever we do, make an IP of it and build a product which you can sell tomorrow to another company of a same size or, you know, or in the same business or similar business so that you actually imbibe your scrum way of working. Your agility is built in. You know how to actually make money out of what you do. So it's not only looking at a hosting aspect, make a mm. product, whatever you do newly, make it for the same. So you are the next SaaS provider. That is Different. Yeah. And uh, thank you for your views. Uh, I am pretty uh, surprised and uh, happily surprised that we are able to pack so much in one hour and still probably have 30 seconds to go. It can only happen when I have 
panelists like you. So thank you very much for uh, your views and uh, sharing them very openly and honestly with us. Uh, and I'm hoping that all our viewers were able to enrich themselves from this insight which came out of the, the panel today. Uh, thank you very much. And with that, I will hand it over to Ivan. Ivan, back to you. You're absolutely right, Sudeep. I mean, that was such an invigorating and enlightening discussion. And uh, some, some key insights, some great uh, uh, you know, experiences uh, from this very, very powerful panel that was shared and tabled. And I was certainly hooked on to it, and I'm sure everyone uh, was too. Well, friends, uh, that concludes the Economic Times Digital Roundtable on the theme, how relevant is going to cloud for businesses and does a hybrid cloud model make sense today as part of Dell Technologies and Intel Corporation presents and Telstra co-presents the second edition of the Economic Times GCC Summit 2022, co-powered by ServiceNow and Salesforce. A big thank you to all the members of this esteemed panel for taking time off from their busy schedules and sharing their valuable insights with us. I would also like to thank Sudeep K. Goswami for doing a wonderful job of moderating this wonderful panel. It was great to listen and learn from these bright minds and influential leaders and hear them share cutting edge insights on the relevance of going to cloud for businesses. I'm sure we are leaving with some important takeaways. I would like to take this opportunity to once again thank our partners for collaborating with us at this summit, presenting partners Dell Technologies and Intel, co-presenting partner Telstra, co-part partners Salesforce and ServiceNow, knowledge partner Deloitte India, talent leadership partner Carrier Technologies India, innovation partner Pfizer, associate partner Global Logic, media partners GC Media Group, Pace Space Magazine and Business Transformation Asia. And this was brought to you by ET Unwired. Last but not least, a big thank you to all of you for joining us today. And we look forward to your participation in more such summits in future. Do attend the sessions that are still in progress by clicking on the plenary session tab on your screen in the auditorium. This is your host, Ivan Rodericks, signing off for now. Enjoy the rest of the day. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.